Hello everybody, it is me, Spooky Brandy, and um, I have not told a ghost story in quite some time. Now, some of you may know that I used to be a paranormal investigator. I used to be a ghost hunter way back in the day, uh, and it, you know, eventually got to the point where I just did not have the time to dedicate to being a paranormal investigator anymore, uh, which was a shame because I had some adventures and uh, I sometimes tell you guys about those adventures. Um, so uh, I wanted to, I was kind of looking through the ones that I have told, um, I will put a link to like the playlist below um, where I talk about all my little ghost hunting adventures and ghost hunts and all that stuff. Um, but I never told you guys about the Charleston Jail. Yes, I was uh, born and raised here in the Low Country of South Carolina. It's called the Low Country. Um, I was born and raised in Mount Pleasant, um, but downtown Charleston is very close to that. This happened years ago. It was one of our very first paranormal investigations. I want to say it's 2006. I could be wrong. And it was me, Dave, and Jared. Uh, we actually had to pay to do this investigation because the Charleston jail was actually um, doing this like you could pay to get a, a guided tour, but if you wanted to just, you know, investigate at night, they would basically take your money, they would let you in the building, they would lock the door behind you, and let you have fun for however long you need. Um, and uh, it was, it was amazing. So, let's set the stage, okay? The Charleston Jail uh, is extremely old. It is a bit of a dilapidated building. It was when we were investigating. Now, I know that recently they've made some improvements and they've, um, you know, they've uh, kind of doctored up some things and, and changed some things around, but, you know, it was, it was kind of falling apart. And it was actually being used as an art studio for the uh, College of Charleston students um, it, for part of the building. It was actually kind of being rented out, basically. Can you imagine creating art in such a space? Like, that just say, seems so inspiring to me. So, we get there, I want to say maybe 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I think it was. And we meet the tour guide. She was a, a lovely woman. She knew the, the building backwards and front ways. She was just full of knowledge and, you know, had kind of explained some of the uh, experiences that some people had had and, and everything like that. So she kind of gave us a little rundown, you know, and then she said, all right, you guys have a blast. And so it was just me, Dave and Jared left in this building alone. Uh, they locked the door behind us. So it wasn't like anybody was sneaking in. It was just us. Now, the Charleston Jail has three stories, I believe. Yes, three stories. And um, the, the problem with this building is there was tons of noise pollution. What I mean by that is when you're trying to do a paranormal investigation, you don't want all these like outside noises and things like that because you want to try to find definitive evidence of a ghost or, you know, something. And if you can explain away any of your recordings by saying, oh, you could hear outside and there was somebody outside, you know, at their car or something like that, you really can't definitively say that, ooh, this is a ghost or this is a disembodied voice or anything like that. You can't really say that definitively. And so that was a bit of a bummer. Basically from any part of the building, you could hear everything going on in the busy downtown Charleston area. You could hear, you know, people shouting across the street at their friends. You could hear people, you know, locking their cars and, you know, slamming car doors. And like, you could hear all of it um, from any, area of the building. So it kind of did, it, it broke it a little bit. It broke up a little bit of the spooky factor because, you know, you're hearing like people ja like laughing and joking and stuff outside. There were no windows. There were just bars. There were no glass panes on any of the windows. It was all bars. So you know, you could just reach outside <laughs> at any given time. Um, and the floors were made of almost like plywood. And so I could literally just shout down to the, the bottom floor from the top floor uh, and they would hear me clear as day. 
with all of that being said, again, this was our first official investigation and it was so much fun and it was definitely spooky. It was creepy. It was not as creepy as I'd like because of all of those outside things, but it was still creepy. From the ground floor up to like the second floor, there's a set of stairs, right? And they kind of curve around. Now on the stairs are these candles. There was electricity in this building, but it they didn't have fixtures everywhere. It wasn't very bright or well lit or anything. A lot of the light came from candles. So some of the, um, like the, on the sides of the stairs, there were candles that had been lit all day long. So of course they were melted a little bit down the sides of the candles and onto the stairs a little bit. That will be important later. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I'm, I'm seeing the candles. I was like, oh, this is just, it's a really nicely like, you know, it's a nice little setup and everything. And uh, we're trying to scout out where we want to put all of our equipment. So we had like handheld cameras, like the old school ones with like the tapes in them, like hi eights and uh, mini DVs and stuff like that. Um, real low tech. <laughs> we also had audio recorders and then we had, I think one stationary camera. So we were trying to scout out, okay, where should we put everything? And we decided on the second floor, we were going to put the stationary camera kind of looking down by the main hallways and it looked toward the stairs where all those candles are, right? Um, so we decided to put stationary cam camera there and then we were going to use our handheld cameras and walk around and try to, you know, see what we could pick up. So, um, set up the main camera, lights out, we're by ourselves and, you know, we're just walking around. Now there was a, a room that was, I, I, Dave is a lot better at explaining what each of these rooms was intended for. He knows the history. I'm just there for the ghosts. <laughs> I'm very bad about history. So he was the history buff. So that's why he was so integral to our team. Uh, and I was very good at staying still and analyzing, you know, and, and not getting so spooked that I couldn't figure out what was happening. So uh, we made such a good team. And then Jared was our tech guy. So he was he was really well versed in, in the tech and, and everything like that. So, you know, it, it was kind of like perfect trio on this first investigation. Um, but yeah, one of the rooms, we all got this really eerie feeling and it, it was just this, it was this room off to the side on the second floor and we just got the heebie jeebies. Like it just, it, it just, I don't know, it just, it felt like there was something crawling under my skin. Like the whole time I was in there, I just, it just felt off. I couldn't quite place why, um, but it just felt off. So we're in there, we're trying to get any kind of reaction where, you know, is everybody here? Is this somebody who used to be locked up in the jail? Blah, 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 blah. And, and as we're about to ask another question, we hear what sounds like a little pebble like being thrown. So it almost sounds like a very, very small pebble and you hear it. So it, it, it sounded like it was airborne and then landed and then kind of bounced a couple times and then scooted. It was that sound and it was very, very faint, but it was in the hallway where the stationary camera was. So the stationary camera, you know, um, wasn't huge, like high quality or anything like that. So it, it was not, you know, high def by any means. And the lighting in there was really, really dark, you know? Um, so we weren't honestly expecting to catch much on that camera but the sound came from that area. So we were like, ooh, well maybe the stationary camera will catch it, cool. Um, but we go out to investigate and we're trying to figure out what made that sound. Do we see anything out of place? There was a small piece of wax that had been chipped off. You know how wax looks when it gets broken off, right? It's a very clean break. So it's like, you know, when you see melted wax, it's very fluid and flowy. But once you like break a piece off, there's that sharp edge of where it got broken off from the rest of the candle. There was a small piece of wax about this big, right in the middle of the floor, and it had been freshly broken off. And mind you, we were in there by ourselves. And because of where it was and everything like that, I was like, that's gotta be what made the sound. But who threw it? Who broke it off and who threw it? 
Unfortunately, the stationary camera, as predicted, did not pick up anything visual. It just picked up the audio. Um, but, you know, didn't it, there wasn't a person standing there and, like, picking up a piece of wax and throwing it. Like, it, it was... It was just a sound, unfortunately. So that was kind of like a, ooh, all right, okay. So we kept trying to get more and more sounds. Didn't get anything else in that room at that time. Across the hall from the other room is a room that does not have any of the, you know, jail cells or anything like that in it. It's, it's all emptied out. There's no like original jail cells sitting in the room, but we believe that was one of the rooms that Lavinia Fisher was being imprisoned. We don't know for sure, no one knows for sure, but we kept trying to talk to Lavinia Fisher. Um, and she is famously known as like one of the first female serial killers and she was one of the um, more infamous prisoners at the Charleston jail. That's why we kept trying to prod her. <laughs> so uh, we were, you know, calling out to Lavinia, calling out nothing, nothing, nothing. However, on our audio equipment, we did catch what sounded like a door either opening or closing. It's very hard to tell because again, the audio is, you know, it's low quality audio recorders. Um, but it sounds almost like a door either unlatching or latching, like an old metal latch. And then you hear a fine. Now it could be high. Hi. <laughs> it could be Phi, which is like an old curse. Um, it could be something else, but it, it was basically un inaudible. We couldn't quite make out the word that was being said, but it almost had like a whisper of at the beginning of it and a hi. And it was definitely a whisper. Uh, we did not hear it at the time. And this is, this is, I'd say this is important and this is kind of it's important to, to note the sound because if somebody was outside, now mind we're, we're on the second floor, but if somebody was something, you know, outside and they were trying to talk to us, they would, we could hear them. We, we absolutely could hear them only if they were speaking like their regular tone or yelling. This was clearly a whisper and it sounded very close to our audio equipment. That's what makes it substantial to me um, because again, if it had just been like a regular voice, we'd be like, oh, you know, somebody outside messing with us or something. There was a really funny moment, uh, like halfway through the investigation or maybe even right at the beginning of the investigation, the sub pump from outside kicks on and we all like shit a brick. It was so funny because it was so quiet, eerie, eerie quiet. And we're trying to be quiet and we're trying to... Lavinia talked to us and you hear and really like, <laughs> it was a really funny moment and then of course after that happened then we got used to it and we're like okay we, we know what that is now but man when it first happened we were like what was that <laughs> anyway um so uh you know we we didn't have again we didn't have any like any visual evidence that came about from this investigation. We got lots of eerie feelings, but uh, all in all, it was just a really beautiful location to investigate. Um, because of our, you know, limited technical resources and because of all the outside interference, we really could not definitively say, hey, the, the jail is haunted. But I know that there have been tons of different ghost adventures, ghost hunters, like I think every paranormal group known to man has been at the Charleston jail and they've done their own investigation and they've come up with their own evidence or not evidence. Um, and so, you know, you can absolutely find those on the internet. Um, you know, like I said, we were working with really, really old equipment and, you know, so we, we don't have like this great HD, like play by play of what happened. Um, but, uh, it was an incredible experience and I would love to go back. I would absolutely love to go back and vlog the whole experience. Now that technology is, is what it is. It's, it's a lot easier to do something like that. Um, you know, maybe one of these days, you know, I'll have the free time <laughs> to go on some investigations. I would love to bring Dave along. I'm sure he'd be game too. Um, but, uh, yeah, 
that's that was the Charleston jail you know we we didn't like I said we didn't have any evidence but you know they were so accommodating and letting us just kind of roam free um, and it was definitely a fun, creepy experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna see more of these, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to uh, subscribe to this channel and join the Spooky family, please go ahead and do so. Hit the notification bell if you really wanna know when I upload my videos. I know a lot of you have been telling me that you're missing like half my videos. You didn't even know that I have been uploading for two years straight. Um, so I am pretty consistent. Um, you can actually just click on my video videos and see everything that I've done. Um, but anyway, you guys are amazing. You are gorgeous. And if anyone tells you anything different, they can suck it.